Hi friends, I'm Phil and I'm a poet just like you. I want to talk to you today about something that is everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Something you see happening every single day, but you can't take a picture of it. You can make it happen or speed it up, but you can't stop it, at least not for long. It can be unpredictable, even though it's constant. It's something that people are really afraid of, but always asking for. I want to let you know that it's happening to you, too. I'm talking about change. You see, I'm way too hot in this. No. Still too dressed up. No. Where, where am I right now? Uh, th this is weird. This will work. Change is amazing. Change can be slow or fast. It can feel like it is never going to happen. And then it all happens in an instant. You look up and wonder where the time went. It feels like you were eight years old only yesterday, unless you were eight years old yesterday, in which case it's different than that. Change can make us taller and bigger. It messes with our nice haircut and it's completely inevitable, which means it's going to happen no matter what. But some kinds of changes, especially big important changes, Sometimes it takes a lot of people working really hard together to make them happen. Anyway, before you change the channel, let's do this. It's time for change and for another episode of Poet Show It. I'm a poet. You're 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 a poet. So come and show it. You're a poet. So are you still with me? Didn't change your mind, did you? So if change is always happening and totally inevitable, then what's so hard about it? Well, for one thing, change is going to happen, but are we going to like it? Not all of it, for sure. But if we want something, we can change how some change changes. Or something that makes sense. Let's say that one year from today, you want to be an awesome ukulele player. You have two choices. You can practice the ukulele or you can not practice the ukulele. The year is going to pass either way. Let's say you were eight years old yesterday a year from now, you're going to be nine years old. You'll get a little taller and your nose might get a little bigger. So you're going to change as a person. But if you decide to practice, now nine-year-old big nose you knows how to play the ukulele. So anyway, that's how I think about change. Today we're going to read some awesome poems by awesome poets that all talk about change in their own way. And at the end of the episode, maybe they'll change our perspective on change. All right, you ready to get started? Poem number one. Caterpillars by Aubrey May. Aubrey May is in Mrs. Action's class at Orion Oaks Elementary. Of all the things that change, I think one of the coolest examples is how a caterpillar turns into a butterfly. This is something we all know about, but when you really think about it, it's almost hard to comprehend. A little worm-like dude crawls around, eats a bunch of leaves, wraps himself up in a cocoon for a while, and he comes out as a totally different thing. Where do the wings even come from? And it seems like Aubrey May is pretty fascinated by caterpillars too. Caterpillars glow, caterpillars row, and caterpillars go slow, slow, slow. When caterpillars freeze, there's a breeze. But when caterpillars stop, there's a ping pong cop. 
But when you're a caterpillar, I say you can turn into a beautiful butterfinger. When caterpillars change, they stay in one place. Until they change, they are like having a race. Oh boy, that was fun. But remember, caterpillars can be fun. This poem is so good. It's so much fun to read with a great musical rhythm and really good internal rhymes. Right from the beginning, the poem is super fun. Caterpillars glow, caterpillars row, and caterpillars go slow, slow, slow. It's a really musical and it has a great visual. I never thought about a caterpillar rowing, but that is the movement they make when they're walking on all of those legs. In keeping with the flowy rhythm that she has, I love that she uses the term butterfinger in place of butterfly. It's brilliant poetic license. It sounds awesome, it's super playful, and we all know what she means. In fact, since this is such a good example, let's take just a second to talk about poetic license. It's when someone chooses words that might not be 100% accurate in order to create a feeling or, or match up with a rhythm that is working. The word butterfinger here isn't the normal word for a butterfly, but it sounds so good in the poem and it's close enough that we know what she means. It actually adds to the poem and it gives us an even better feeling for the entire experience. But when you're a caterpillar, I say you can turn into a beautiful butterfinger. Then Aubrey May actually changes the color of the crayon she's using to write when she starts talking about how caterpillars change, which is a really fun visual. Then she makes an amazing comparison here. When caterpillars change, they stay in one place until they change. They are like having a race, them being completely still. But until they change, they're like racing to change, even though they're in one place. It's super dynamic language and really brilliant. And then she finishes, oh boy, that was fun. But remember, caterpillars can be fun. And I agree. I think caterpillars are super fun. And I think this poem is super, super fun. Really nice work, Aubrey May. Thank you for sharing. Poem number two. Easter 2020 by Luca. Luca is in Mrs. Van Vliet's class at Beechwood School. While caterpillars turning into butterfingers, butterflies, is a natural change. Some changes we don't want to wait to happen naturally. Sometimes when things are bumming us out, we sit around and kind of hope for change. So let's see what Luca has to say about it. On that very day, I knew Easter wasn't going to be the same as all the other very fun and joyful Easters, so let's hope next year coronavirus is long, long gone next year. If not, I would be as angry as a hornet. Oh man, I understand how you feel, Luca. We all probably do. Luca's poem is very topical and talks about something that we're all dealing with right now. And his poem is written in free verse which is a really fancy way of saying, no rules, write it however you feel it. But even though the poem is in free verse, Luca does an amazing job of using the way he wrote it to reflect how he feels. He has all of his thoughts strung together in one long sentence that never stops. When I'm feeling frustrated, I kind of talk in the same way, mumbling to myself and adding thoughts and more thoughts to the same sentence. Let's try to read it really frustrated and see how it feels. Easter 2020. On that very day, I knew Easter wasn't going to be the same as all the other very fun and joyful Easters, so let's hope next year coronavirus is long, long gone next year. If not, I would be as angry as a hornet. It kind of makes sense, right? And he ends the poem with an amazing simile, as angry as a hornet. It's just so visual. I know exactly how he feels. I love that phrase. It's so perfectly descriptive and a really strong end to a poem that is one long run-on sentence of frustration. Thank you, Luca. I love this poem. And I know exactly how you feel. I think we all do. If we're all still stuck inside in a year, I think we're all going to be angry as hornets. Poem number three. My Loose Tooth by Maisie. Maisie is in Ms. Thorpe's class at Orion Oaks Elementary. 
while caterpillars changing into butterflies is natural. Waiting for the world to change can really test our patience. Some kinds of change are really exciting for us. Getting a loose tooth is exciting for a number of reasons. For one, you're getting older and getting newer, bigger teeth. Personally, I can't wait for all these adult teeth to fall out so I can get my giant teeth. Do you know how fast I'll be able to eat pizza with giant teeth? I guess until then I'll just have to appreciate Maisie's excitement. The other day, I was eating food. My tooth hurt. I didn't know what to do. I looked in the mirror and it wiggled. I was so happy, I giggled. Then my tooth fell out. The gift the tooth fairy left made me shout. Nice! Tooth fairy money! What? Great poem, Maisie. I love the rhyme scheme. And you do a great job of taking us through each step of the process and explaining how you feel at each step. The other day I was eating food. My tooth hurt and I didn't know what to do. It's confusion. I looked in the mirror and it wiggled. I was so happy I giggled. Happiness. Then my tooth fell out. The gift the tooth fairy left made me shout. Excitement. Maisie kept up a great consistent pattern throughout the poem of telling us something that happened and how it made her feel and something that happened and how it made her feel. When we stay consistent in a poem like that, we're making sure that the reader knows what to expect next so they understand the journey that we're taking together. Really great poem, Maisie. Thank you so much for sharing it with all of us. Poem number four. Crazy Soccer Ball by Sash. Sash is in Ms. Van Vliet's class at Beechwood School. Luca and Sash are both in Ms. Van Vliet's class, so either they're classmates or there's two Ms. Van Vliet's. Keep an eye out and let me know. So another aspect of change, and something we have to accept as part of life, is that change is unpredictable. While we can um, practice the ukulele and get better at it, there are still a lot of things that are outside of our control. Getting new neighbors, having to change schools, the weather a week from now, there are a lot of things we just don't know. Change is going to happen, and sometimes all we can do is hold on tight and try to make the best of it. I feel like Sash does a great job of dealing with unpredictability in this poem. When I kick a soccer ball, surprises come my way. The ball goes left, right, up, or down, either way. I kick the ball, it goes in or out. I wonder if the next time I kick a soccer ball, what will my next surprise be? This poem is hilarious. Kicking a soccer ball was always a little bit unpredictable for me, too. And I love the way this poem talks about it. Sash talks about the soccer ball as if it's something that they couldn't control at all. And it really gives the poem an awesome, cheerful confusion that I didn't expect. The soccer ball might do anything it wants. Sash does a great job of listing all the different directions. Left, right, up, down, in or out. And then admits they really have no idea whatsoever what it's going to do next. But then finishing up the poem with the question, what will my next surprise be? That makes it clear that even though there's lots of uncertainty and who knows what's going to happen, Sash is going to keep kicking the ball and keep finding out. Amazing, hysterical poem, Sash. Thank you so much for sharing it with all of us. And thank you all for hanging out with me. We got to think about how change affects a caterpillar with amazing rhythm, talk about some things we hope will change, share the excitement of losing our teeth, and even find out what kind of change might happen when we kick a crazy soccer ball. I hope you'll change some blank paper into a poem of your own. And if you do, and you'd like to share it with me, and maybe all of us, you can get your parents' help to go to poetshowit.com to submit. You know, some change might be slow, but I feel like today's episode went by in a... <laughs> Crazy. From the Poetry Workshop, I'm Invisible Phil. I'll see you next time. And until then, keep writing. <laughs>